on my knee. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Salvador. I uh, use he, him pronouns, and I am Senior Public Art Manager at the Regional Arts and Cultural Council. And my colleague here, who's going to be helping facilitate and or who helps partner on the program with me, go for it, Daniela. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Daniela. Um, I work at Open Signal. I'm the communications manager and I use she or they pronouns. And we have uh, my RAC colleague, uh, Benjamin, who will be helping facilitate tonight's session. Benjamin, you wanna give a little introduction just about yourself? Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Benjamin Feinstein. I work at RAC uh, as the program administrator and helping support uh, programs like Fresh Paint. So it's exciting to have you all here tonight, and I'm looking forward to the session. Thanks, Benjamin. And then we also have our ASL interpreters, Rachel and Mary, who will be uh, going back and forth tonight for us. Grateful. And then our captioner, Idella, is also in the space and thankful for having Idella here. Um, so that's the team that's with you all this evening. Um, uh, maybe, actually, Benjamin, let's start it out. Let's start the PowerPoint and go from there. Awesome. So tonight we are going to be talking about Fresh Paint, which is, as you see here, a temporary mural project for emerging artists of color um, that we do in partnership between Regional Arts and Culture Council and Open Signal. Um, this has been going on now. We've been doing this, pro this program, I should say, since 2017. So we're in its sixth year and we are just so excited to continue to be able to offer this program to the larger Portland Metro region. Let's go to the next slide, Benjamin. So here's just a quick rundown of our agenda. Uh, we've done introductions to the folks that are, you'll be in the space with this evening. Um, I'll talk a little bit about accessibility here, um, a little more, and then both uh, Daniela and I will talk about our organizations, and then we will get into what Fresh Paint is for folks that don't know, uh, and then all the things around that, including eligibility, selection process criteria, what to expect, how to apply, timelines, and then um, we'll also talk a little bit about past um, participants, and then open it up to the space for Q&A. So accessibility and assistance, as uh, I introduced both Rachel, Mary, and Nidella here, it is a core value of ours to make sure that we are offering accessibility in our spaces, including these virtual spaces. Um, and so we're really grateful for having the three of them here tonight. Um, just so that for folks they don't know already, we if there are ways that we can help support your experience in this process, please let us know. Things that we do are technical assistance when it comes to navigating the portal or preparing attachments. If there is a desire for translation of materials or applications, we can also do that for you. Large print materials and materials in alternative formats um, as with interpretation services for events like these, as well as captioning. And then of course, any other kind of accommodations that we need to make for folks with disabilities. So I'll just start really quickly with just an introduction of RAC. That's our office right there, um, which we are located off the park blocks in uh, the Pearl. Um, we are a nonprofit um, that actually has contracted back or contracted with the city of Portland and Multnomah County to handle the arts investments. We are about 28 years old, but before that we used to be a city and county bureau as part of government. And then in the early 90s, uh, we made the decision with city and county 
folks uh, and larger partners and stakeholders in the Portland metro area to be more of this regional organization so we can have greater impact in the overall region, which includes uh, Washington County, Clackamas County, and to some degree, Clark County in um, north of us. Um, we do a number of programs and services. Our biggest programs are uh, public art, which is what I'm the program I'm involved with. And then we also offer grants to arts artists and arts organizations. Um, and then we do also other things like um, convening. We do advocacy events. We have some engagement stuff. And then we also have done historically a lot of arts education as well. Um, yeah. Next slide, Benjamin. And this is just more or less what, you know, a lot of stuff I've said already. Um, ultimately, RAC does look at all, we aim to look at all of our programming through um, the lens of equity, inclusions and access, um, because we do value and realize it's important to just make sure that we're serving everyone we can in the region. Um, and there's our website, our web address, if you have any if you're interested in looking where you can find various um, these various programs and of course our Instagram account, um, which we're pretty active on. And next slide. So this program sits within the public art um, umbrella and just for folks that are not aware public art is pretty much all kind of like art programming that happens in the public realm. Um, we do a lot of that through what we call this percent for art uh, program, which is an ordinance that um, allocates 2% of capital construction budgets to do art making um, for, and I should say capital construction budgets for public buildings, both for the city and the county. Um, so we've done a lot of work when, like the libraries right now, they're doing um, a lot of refreshes, renovations, and they're also creating the East County Library. We are handling the art um, installations and art making for them. Uh, we recently uh, completed artworks in the Central Courthouse in downtown, the Portland building, uh, the New Health headquarters for the county that's also in downtown. Um, and then, of course, other kinds of bureaus, which include Portland Bureau of Transportation, the Water Bureau, um, and yeah, just various other things. So. We can do anything from permanent work, uh, exterior work, architecturally integrated work, and then of course we do a number of temporary works, which this program sort of sits in. Um, we also purchase a lot of 2D work, which that's part of our portable works collection, which is this 2D works that travel from uh, public buildings. Um, and they can include a variety of mediums like uh, Anything from you know illustrations, um, paintings, uh, textile work, um, it runs the gamut. Um, we also do a lot of work just supporting community and uh, programming that's specifically programmed for like culturally specific communities. This is being actually one of them as well. Um, and then I oversee the murals program, which is a larger extension of uh, just overall like mural work, which um fresh paint is a part of um and yeah that's we do a lot basically in public art yeah. next slide and then i'm going to turn it over to daniela hello so i'm going to tell you about open signal um so our building is located in the irvington neighborhood and we've been there for about 40 years um, we are on MLK and Graham Boulevard. Next slide, please. So um, this is who we are. Um, we are a community media center. And basically we are a resource for media making in Northeast Portland, um, specifically focused on video production. So um, we are a, we get a mix of private and public funding um, and we program the five local cable channels. So this organization started as your local cable access center and we've kind of expanded um, beyond that to just support creatives 
in Portland um, who are making media work. So we are a media arts resource that offers um, the largest publicly accessible uh, television studios in Portland and an equipment library um, of media making equipment um, that is free of charge to folks in the community. And we also offer artist residencies um, just like Fresh Paints. So yeah, we are basically a platform and a resource to amplify media makers um, who are making activist non-commercial content in the Portland metro area. And that's up in signal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Daniela. Um, also, I forgot to mention, um, if folks have questions at any point it, while we're you know, sharing more about the program, feel free to use the Q&A function and we will keep our eye on it and, and try to answer them as soon as we can. So um, yeah, you don't have to wait at the end if you find you have a question as we're going through this um, presentation. So what is Fresh Paint? Uh, yeah, it is, like I said, a program that we established about six years ago. Um, it's a temporary uh, mural project. Um, and part of why we wanted, part of how I should say this partnership started um, with Open Signal is that we realized um, there's a great demand for artists to kind of like do their first mural. Um, I know at least being with the organization for the last eight years, I've had a lot of artists approach me inquiring, hey, you know, I just want to paint a mural. Do you know if there's a wall? Um, and we don't at this point have an inventory of walls, but it did spark for us an idea of like, God, it'd be really great if we could have a wall for folks that, you know, that we could offer uh, for their first mural just to get their feet wet and, you know, have a chance to create something in the public realm at that scale. And while we were sort of having these conversations and thinking about this, we, um, we're having conversations with uh, Open Signal as they were uh, transforming into Open Signal and really wanting to think about activating um, their West Wall on MLK. Um, and so there was some synergy and I was like, you know what, we have this really visible wall, uh, we want art on it and could you help us with that? And we're like, well, we have this idea of a program, would you be interested? And Fresh Paint was born. Um, and so as part of the hallmarks of the programming that we decided from those early days that we're still maintaining is that we love the idea of a rotating mural. And so that's why this, this is uh, temporary. It's a site that multiple artists can have an opportunity to use. Um, and so it's up for six months. Um, the other thing that we thought was really important is uh, making sure that this opportunity was offered specifically for emerging artists of color. Um, just understanding, uh, if we look at, again, the disparities of uh, services that happen, not just within the arts, but specifically in the arts, uh, really realizing that this is one inroad that we can make uh, to amplifying um, voices that have been historically marginalized. Um, and so for us, it was really important to prioritize uh, emerging artists of color. And I should say for emerging, what we mean by that is an artist that is fresh into their career and their art making practice, or specifically to um, who've never painted a mural before. Um, and so I and a painted an exterior mural on a wall within um, the city of Portland boundaries. Um, so there are some artists that, you know, are have done maybe some kind of large scale work in, in installations that are in interior spaces. Um, maybe they painted on like un unique structures, like maybe retaining walls or a column. Um, that's fine. Um, but if they've never painted an actual exterior wall, that's that's who we're looking for for this program. Um, and then part of the value of, in addition, offering a site, we also wanted to make sure that we offered um, uh, a commission. We offered a fee for artists so that they get paid for doing that work. 
Um, and so that's another part of the programming is that we have uh, made it a prioritize a priority that we are um, compensating artists to do this work. And this year we are actually increasing the fee to be three thousand. Um, that would include uh, not only their design fee, um, but also include expenses that they would need to paint, which includes their materials, insurance, and other things. Um, yeah. Next slide. So who's eligible? Um, so like Salvador mentioned, this opportunity is open to emerging artists who identify as a person of color. Um, and, you know, that can cover a variety of identities, um, African-American, Black, Latinx, Latina, um, like North African, Asian, so emerging artists of color. And because this is, a, this is a very, you know, local project, we're looking for artists who live in Clackamas, Clark, Multnomah, or Washington County. Um, folks who are applying should have a consistent visual art practice. So um, in your application, just showing that you have been at work um, on your craft um, in the recent past. And then also have not created an exterior wall mural in the city of Portland. So like Salvador mentioned, you know, interior murals or uh, murals on other non-building infrastructures are fine, but we're really looking to showcase artists on this really visible um, thoroughfare in Portland who have um, never had their work shown on this scale to this many people. So it's a way to really break into public art in Portland. Thanks, Daniela. Yeah, um, next slide. Um, oh, I should also say too, uh, you know, we on our, on the call, if you go to it, we do list out in just more detail uh, identities that are covered, indigenous folks as well, um, API, uh, Pacific Islander, I should say specifically, um, just there's a number of identities. So just, if you're unsure, if we didn't mention it, um, please look at that. We try to cover the gamut of what we mean by it. Um, so selection process and criteria. Um, how we do this is that every year we try to select at least two artists or artist teams. Um, and part of that is because the murals are temporarily up for six months. So we have one group or an artist that would paint from October to March. Um, and then the next artist team would come in and paint from April to September. Um, and so things that we're looking at are the strength of the artists or the team's past work. So it's important to us that they are, uh, they have a practice um, and if there's collaboration, we're interested in to know what the collaboration looks like. I would also say though, if you've never collaborated before, that doesn't mean we uh, you're ineligible, that's totally fine. Uh, but in the application, if you can uh, communicate how you think that collaboration will work, that would be really helpful. Um, and then, yeah, the ability of the artist and the artist team to complete the mural in a timely and professional manner. So. You know, because we know that this is for artists who've never painted uh, at this scale, that's okay. If you don't need to have that kind of experience, um, I think part of what we're also looking for in the application materials is demonstrating why you think you may be able to do this. Um, so whether that's just again pointing to a consistent art practice, or you do have you have done stuff maybe at a larger scale, it's just never been a mural or um, you just have the desire to try something new and you're really just looking for that opportunity. Um, you're good with project timelines and deadlines, like whatever the case may be that you think, feel free in sharing that, we wanna know, um, yeah. Next slide. Yeah, I would also just say, 
you know, this is really an opportunity to kind of stretch your creative muscles. So don't let, you know, any perceived lack of experience or whatever get in the way of you applying if you're interested. Like this is really an opportunity to learn new skills and try something new um, if you're interested. So yeah, just keep that in mind. So what happens um, after an artist is selected? So first of all, this is a paid opportunity. Uh, selected artists will receive a $3,000 commission. So that includes the cost of materials and insurance. Um, once you've been selected, we will go through a process of design and um, basically you'll be uh, presenting your proposed design to a panel of past, past fresh paint artists. Um, and just wanna note that that process, the design process is um, a paid part of the process. So there's $500 for the actual design of the work. Um, we're not asking anybody to come in with a design already. Um, so you'll present to a panel of past fresh paint artists. Um, they'll review it and all they're reviewing is just the feasibility of it. Um, they're basically there as a resource so that you can rely on their experience to see if it's possible to get this done in the timeline um, in the timeline that we're presenting. And they're not uh, judging it based on the content. Um, we're really looking for you to express yourself and your perspective in this. So really it's just the panel of judges is just looking at, can this be done? And if it's a stretch, then they can also offer you tips on painting. So once we've gone through that um, process, then you will purchase the materials for this. Um, and then once we've gotten to the point of painting, you'll be in charge of transporting the materials. Um, Open Signal has some things like ladders, but all of the actual painting materials you'll need to purchase uh, with that commission. And then essentially it's a two or so weeks that you'll be painting and we'll just work out that timeline um, essentially between me and you, but you know, uh, let us know what times you're available to paint within the two week period and we'll work something out. So um, just know that we're very willing to work around your schedule as long as we keep it within um, that beginning portion of the six months. Great. Um, next slide. So how to apply? Um, well, we uh, have an application process. Um, and as Daniela said, this is going to go before a panel of past fresh paint applicants, which will be reviewing those application submissions. Um, so you would submit those materials via the RAC Opportunity Portal. Um, it's basically where we keep all of our opportunities at, both for grants and public art. Um, once you have, if you have created an account and you, then great, you know what, you're probably familiar with it. And then you can find this opportunity in there. If you haven't, then you would just create an account. Um, and then from there, um, you would be able to search for opportunities like this one. Um, once you log into that, um, and you find this opportunity, it will give you pretty easy step-by-step -step of this task needs to be completed, this material needs to be uploaded, and you would just go through the portal um, submitting those materials. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about those materials too. It does allow you for the uh, ability to save. I will say though, when you're specifically uploading images that are pretty, large um, because we do have the ability to upload up to five uh, 
megabytes uh, for an image. Just know that the, the the portal takes a little bit of time, just like, you know, saving. So if you don't see it saving immediately, that's okay. It's probably just waiting because it's a large file, but eventually it will. Um, and then of course, if you have any questions about the portal, uh, you can either contact myself or Benjamin here, who's joining us and we can help navigate that for you. Um, next slide. So this is just the um, homepage for our portal, if you haven't seen it before. Um, and then you'll see there at the top right, uh, either a login, if you have already an account, if not, do you can go to the register button and then you can create your account. And then from there, um, go into uh, find the opportunities that you're looking for. Next page. So this is a pretty a pretty simple application, I should say. Um, part of it is because we want to make sure that there are not a lot of barriers um, in you know going for something like this. So there are really only two, there's two main things that we're looking at, a statement of interest, as well as um, eight images of past work. Um, the statement of interest, when you go and find the opportunity online, um, it does have a list of questions. Um, so it'd be really good if you, as you're answering the statement of interest, that you're answering those questions. Um, part of what um, we're looking for is just like, again, why are you interested in this opportunity? Um, how do you think you're going to be able to complete this, like demonstrating capacity? And it, if, again, if there's an op if if you are working in an artist team, then what does that collaboration look like? Um, I think those are pretty much the questions. I may miss one or two, um, but I would definitely encourage you to uh, make sure that you're addressing them in the statement of interest. I should also say, like for folks that I don't know if, you know, just in terms of applying to opportunities, this is almost like your first impression that you're making with the panel. So just keep that in mind, what they're reading or um, uh, is really the first thing that they're learning about you. So try to be brief, try to be concise and make sure you're being also very direct about what's being um, offered as what we would like a response to. Um, and then eight images of past work. These are just images that demonstrate your practice, demonstrate why you think, again, you would be a good candidate for this program. Um, and uh, with those eight images of past work, we offer um, for every artwork uh, a second image, something of a detail if you want, or if you wanted to include a composite uh, maybe it's like more sculptural or there's just something that requires a lot of perspectives. There's, you know, that second image is there to offer that so that the panel can see what that looks like. Um, I believe that the statement of interest, we're asking for any, no more than 3000 characters or less. Uh, and then for the eight images of past work, again, we're looking for JPEG specifically, no bigger than five megabytes. And next, and yeah, these are the, I think, is this me? <laughs> I think this is, is this still me? <laughs> um, it might be. <laughs> thanks, Daniela. I'm like, wait a minute. Um, yeah, just the installation dates, uh, October 23rd to March, 2024, uh, and then April, 2024 to September. Um, and then as Daniela said, we it will be her that will specifically be working with the artists and artist team about that um, actual sketch uh, painting timeline. That's it. Yep. There's that deadline. <laughs> the 12. So we're, we're three weeks away. That's right. So, um... Yeah, I would just encourage anyone to at least take a look at the application. Um, we have plenty of time to ask questions about it. Um, Salvador and I are a resource that you can, um, we're very open to you getting in touch to ask any questions you have about it. Um, 
and then we will be uh, selecting artists in August. We don't have a specific date yet, but that's when we'll be letting folks know um, if they've been selected for this program. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you'll see there 1159 is the deadline. Um, so just make sure, I mean, we know artists, arts administrators, this is all the same. Try not to procrastinate. Start it earlier than later, especially because you never know as you go through the process, you might have a question that you didn't think you needed to, you didn't think was going to be a question. And then you also want to build in that time to make sure it gets answered. Um, so yeah, just, you know, start just start now even if it's just looking at the the portal and seeing what it is you need um yeah we encourage folks to start earlier rather than later and next slide daniella well well yes so start your application now or at least just take a look at it um and then it closes at 11 59 on july 12th and then we'll uh, spend a month or so going through the applications. And then in August, we will let folks know, we'll be selecting to artists or artist teams for the next year of this program. Um, so yeah, just wait till August to hear back. And then um, yeah, each we'll, we'll let, the artists know that they've been selected and then um, you'll be able to, we'll have a conversation about whether you're in that first session or the, the second part of the year, um, all based on your schedule. Yes, um, next slide. Yeah, as Daniela mentioned, we're pretty accessible. Um, these are our emails. These are all phone numbers. I should say I'm probably the most accessible by email just because I'm we're I think we're both still working uh, partially from home. And so that's how we're connected. Um, yeah, and those are just usually our general times that you can get a hold of us as well. Next slide. Well, so Fresh Paint has been going on for a while now. I mean, we're about to enter, I think it's sixth year, um, which is really amazing. So um, yeah, over that, over that time, we've had, I think 11 artists or artist teams participate, which is really amazing. And each of them have had a unique impact um, on this wall and the neighborhood. And I think one of my favorite parts about this program is that people really remember each piece. So just something to think about. You really become a, a part of the history of the neighborhood. Um, in the first year, um, it was by invitation. So there were three artists who took part, Molly Mendoza, Alex Chu, and Rob Lewis. And then starting in 2018, um, this program began using an open call and um, yeah, I think we'll go through the murals and um, name each artist. So maybe next slide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is the first mural, Molly Mendoza, um, really riffing on the open signal theme, very much about community media. Yes. Alex Chu. Um, and this is a really great example of somebody who has had a lot of opportunities presented after taking part in this program. And I think that's really something to think about is that this is a way to break into public art. It's a way to um, yeah, start opening up these opportunities and get experience. And a really awesome thing about taking part is in fresh paint is that um, people will possibly reach out to you for further commissions. That's right. 
that's where I am. Yeah. Salvador. Rob Lewis here. Um, and you know, to to the point that Daniela is uh, is making, this has been a launch pad for various folks um, to do all sorts of things, or I should say to do more work in the public realm. And yes, a lot of folks have gone on to do more murals, but this is also a great program to find out. And we're, Danielle and I are really open to it as maybe you're not into doing mural making, like maybe you tried this and you're like, you know, maybe this isn't what I want to do. That's okay. Um, some other great things that have happened though, um, for example, with Rob Lewis, he um, is primarily a graphic designer and he does a lot of um, collage work. Um, this is the first thing he's ever painted. Well, first of all, using really paints, that's not his medium. Um, and also then on top of that painting at this scale, but it was after this project that he started to move further into still doing stuff in the public realm, but doing more graphic design work, doing something that uh, he creates the design, but then it can be translated into uh, another medium that either gets scaled up. So he's not actually responsible or having to do that kind of paint painting work. I think that's also really awesome and, and important to probably just understand as an artist, what other pivots can you make, you know, on this journey of like doing stuff as just an artist period. But if you want to do stuff in the public realm, um, so this, as you see here, this is uh, definitely a reflection of his collage work. Um, and yeah, he was really ambitious. He wanted to do both sides of the building. It was, I should say though, it was after this um, artist that we decided that's really ambitious and maybe especially for emerging artists, let's really keep it to one, one section of that wall and which is why we landed on that particular um, north end of the uh, entryway uh, because we learned, yeah, we wanna make sure we also give make this realistic for artists. Um, so yeah, learning yeah. on our end. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, just riffing on that. Like, I just really wanna stress like, this is truly a, a way to experiment not only for yourself as an artist, but also on our end. So this whole process is a conversation. So, you know, like Salvador said, you know, this is an opportunity for you to stretch your creative skills to learn. Um, and we're also learning from you. So just if you're interested and, you know, you're, intimidated by the scale, um, don't be, and also reach out if you would, if you have any questions or um, any concerns about this. Next slide. So this is artist team, uh, Damian Dawahari and Andrea De La Vega. And um, they painted in the fall of 2018, as you can tell, or if it's not apparent, this is also a reflection of um, Dia de los Muertos. Um, and uh, this was the first time the two of them had done a collaboration at this kind of scale. Um, yeah, uh, real, they, already, they had a very strong vision of what they wanted to do. And as you can tell, it's it's really reflected in the imagery that we see here. Next slide. This is another artist team um, of Anke Gladnik, uh, Maria Rodriguez, and Bizar Gomez, also known as Victor Gomez. Um, and they had never also done anything at the scale. And they really liked the idea, similar to Molly, I would say, is like, youth and media communication. Um, this was uh, in, uh, I believe, early 2019. Um, and so, you know, uh, we still are, but then going through a lot politically, and this was something that they were hoping would help mobilize young people to get involved, to um, use their voices. 
um, sort of what's reflected here in the, the composition. Next one, Daniela. Yeah, so this one is by Munta and Puel um, and like was what was mentioned with Andrea and Damien, um, one of the really exciting things about this program is just the expression of your culture and your experiences that this opportunity offers. So we don't have guidelines about the design other than um, just the timeline and getting the materials. So this is really all about your story. And Munta, you know, is a break dancer. So, you know, he painted a mural about break dancing and it really no matter like what story you're telling, um, it will resonate with folks who there are probably, you know, a few thousand folks who see this passing um, by on MLK every day. And it's really going to resonate with some of them. So this is really like, really an opportunity to share a part of yourself and um, have people react to it and, and um, yeah, relate to it. So something I really appreciate about this program. Um, and on the next slide, there's another example of this. So this is Lene Lai, um, who, uh, you know, is telling a story about generations here um, and about women and that knowledge that is passed down. Um, so yeah, this is, really an opportunity to be really free with your storytelling and you can see like by it being so individual to you and your practice and your story it can be really impactful so yeah next one this is jose valentine another you know powerful expression of culture of chicano culture of michica culture um using really vivid imagery, really evocative imagery. Um, yeah, I would just reiterate, like, we're not going to, um, you know, judge any, we're not, we're not placing any requirements on this work because we're not trying to pass any judgment or like these qualifications aren't related to the design and the story, like, it's really all about yourself. So you are encouraged to be bold and personal with it, which I really appreciate about this mural. Next one, Salvador. Yeah, this is Zainab Saab. Um, and uh, as Daniela was saying, you know, we, we don't have um, necessarily like, themes or goals that we're trying to achieve with this, with the, with the imagery for artists. Um, it really is an opportunity for them to share their voice and however they want to share that. And oftentimes what we have found is a lot of artists are using um, parts of their identity as an expression, um, oftentimes because they haven't had the freedom to do that. Um, and we like to think that's something that this program can offer um, So and be a platform for. So in the case of Zainab, um, Zainab uh, identifies uh, as North African and um, uh, Swana, I believe, uh, and uh, growing up in a household um, where the um, the women in the family would often um, get together and talk and discuss, share stories, gossip, all the things, and they do it over tea. Um, is something that was very vivid and um, impactful for Zainab, and something they wanted to communicate in this mural. And so, I don't know if it's clear from this image, but there are tiny uh, teacups that are used as a pattern uh, as the in that sort of central part of the uh, mural 
Um, and they also do a lot of abstract work um, and they do it with like these kind of vivid colors. And so those are sort of the other parts that you are seeing here with the sort of neon yellow, the neon pink, um, and then this beautifully patterned teas, uh, cups of tea that are, yeah, making up this very um, vibrant kind of pattern. Um, yeah. The next slide. So this artist is Jerome Sloan. Jerome actually grew up in the neighborhood, um, which was really, I think, really, uh, for us, it was very meaningful to have an artist that has actual ties to the neighborhood in such a deep way, um, and then participate in this program. Um, Jerome uh, spent a majority of his life incarcerated and has been recently um, uh, released and is, you know, doing a lot in his community. And as part of that, um, he, uh, this was one of the first projects that he'd done, um, which is create this mural in, again, a neighborhood that he grew up in. Um, and yeah, there's, uh, Jerome does a lot of like uh, imagery with hands. He also does a lot with these like, um, more geometric and abstract details. Um, and this is called growth. And I think a lot of that is about the opportunity to continue to um, be, to better yourself and to evolve um, and continue to have that, you know, um, freedom to do just that. So yeah, this was a, this was a really powerful um, expression that we had on the wall when it was up last year. Um, and then our next slide, which is our current mural. Uh, actually, Danielle, I'm gonna turn this over to you to, to talk about. Yeah, this piece is uh, by Perlin Tan and it's titled Liberate. And I think it's a good example of using this opportunity to um, make a comment on more timely things that are on your mind and affecting you and um, to express. So um, this mural is another one that talks about um, intergenerational knowledge and it's specifically talking about women and responding to infringement on women's rights in the US and specifically BIPOC women. Um, so yeah, it's another mural with a really powerful message that is very timely, very culturally specific. Um, and I also just like so graphic and a stretch for the artist. Right, this was something that they had never done before. They're primarily a printmaker, um, and it was a just like such a joy to see them adapt their practice to this scale. So, um, again, this is this is truly like a learning opportunity, and I think that. And like, I think a lot of folks have been amazed at like what they can do that they didn't think they could do. So, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so next slide, I think that's, that's all of our slides. And so let's turn it over just for folks. Yeah. Uh, if they have any questions, I know we've been getting some questions in the chat and the Q&A box. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, and if there's anything else, feel free to, to ask. Otherwise, we hope this presentation was insightful and helpful. And um, yeah, we hope that you apply and we see your, we see your application in the mix. Thank you, everyone. Feel free to reach out. Don't forget. Thank you, everyone. A pleasure having you all today. Bye.